Well, couldn't stay away from VeggieTales for long now, could I? In case you weren't aware, I grew up in a Christian household, which of course means I watched a ton of VeggieTales in my life. And to celebrate the series' 25th anniversary two years ago, I ended up reviewing the first and only VeggieTales video game to ever come to consoles, Larry Boy and the Bad Apple. It was a tie-in game to the episode of the same name, the first Larry Boy-centered episode in seven years. And for us VeggieTales fans, this was a big deal. Now, it's not like this was the first Larry Boy game, period. There was actually a Flash game on the Larry Boy website back in 1999, but it's unfortunately unavailable to be played now. Now, even with the Wayback Machine. But even then, this was the first and only console VeggieTales game. No more was controlling a cucumber in spandex limited to just a keyboard. But yeah, the PS2 Larry Boy game, despite being PS2 shovelware very clearly made for younger children in mind, was actually pretty alright. Not the best 3D platformer out there, far from it but honestly not a bad one either. Though of course there is more to the story here, isn't there? Yeah, you've seen the title of this video. Like many lower budget PS2 games back in the day, there was also a Game Boy Advance version to go with it, releasing on the same day if I recall correctly. Because I didn't own a PS2 for a long while, I only got to play the PS2 version at my uncle's place when it first came out, but I did own a Game Boy Advance, so you can bet that I played a ton of this version as a kid. That said, it's been a long time since I last touched this game, so this should make for an interesting revisit. So the first thing of note is that this version version was developed by a company called DC Studios. And before you ask, no, it has no connection to DC Comics. That's just a coincidence. Though nine-year-old me believed otherwise, and seeing this made me legitimately think that it'd now be possible for Larry Boy to team up with the Justice League or something. Yes, this was how my nine-year-old brain worked. Though honestly, 23-year-old me would still be down to see this happen. Anyway, you start the game up, and Larry Boy's tech-savvy butler Alfred shares some apparently very disturbing news. Junior Asparagus was spotted. Actually, you know what? Given Larry Boy nearly died twice as a result of Junior's actions, this is a valid response on Alfred's part. In all seriousness, Junior was spotted playing basketball at the top of a construction site, so Larry Boy needs to go save him. Once in the gameplay, you find yourself within, what else? A 2D platformer. More specifically, a puzzle platformer, with an even bigger emphasis on the puzzle part than the PS2 version. Heck, you literally don't even have a means to attack enemies in this version. Though that said, the enemies can't hurt you either, but rather just inconvenience you. The Onion Fellow will slow down Larry Boy's movement, the Red Pepper Guy will reverse Larry Boy's directional inputs, and should you try to flip a switch with a P next to it, they'll flip it back off unless you distract them first. The only real threat in this game is the timer, as you'll lose a life if it runs out. Though honestly, there was only one level during my playthrough where it started to get a bit close. You often have more than enough time to beat the level. Larry Boy's moveset is pretty simple here. He can run, jump, get a higher jump from running, roll, push and pull blocks, use his plunger ears as a tether rope on marked spots, and that's basically it. Again, you don't have any sort of attack, so maneuvering the level is the name of the game here. Well, the name of the game is actually Larry Boy and the Bad Apple, and I am so sorry for that bad literal joke. Now looking at the general level structure and player abilities, I imagine at least some of you might be getting vibes of another puzzle platformer on the GBA. A certain Mario vs. Donkey Kong, to be specific. Well, as someone who's also played through Mario vs. Donkey Kong, I can safely confirm that... Yeah, it's very similar. Fortunately though, the two games are just different enough that I wouldn't call it an outright copycat. In particular, Larry Boy feels like a simpler rendition of this gameplay style, which given how stupid hard Mario vs. Donkey Kong can get, this is welcome in a way. Mario vs. Donkey Kong may be longer and have deeper mechanics, but Larry Boy at least doesn't have fall damage, so that's an immediate plus. Though as if the Mario vs. Donkey Kong similarities weren't clear enough, the first boss level is literally just a level in the style of the original Donkey Kong, just replacing barrels with basketballs. Speaking of said boss level, this is where Larry Boy first meets, who else? The Bad Apple. Much like in the original episode and the PS2 game, the Bad Apple's whole trick is that she manipulates and traps people by using their deepest temptations against them, which in Junior's case is his love for sports. Though I can't help but wonder why the Bad Apple lured a child to the top of a construction tower. Were you planning on throwing him off or something? That's kind of dark. Fortunately, Larry Boy reaching the top is enough for the Bad Apple to scurry off in defeat, and then, ah! I'm starting to see why Alfred said Junior being spotted was disturbing news. Looks like he's having a flashback to the Pie War. So yeah, like the episode and PS2 game, the plot has Larry Boy going up against the Bad Apple as she attempts to trap multiple citizens of Bumbleberg within her literal webs of temptation. However, in the episode and PS2 game, the Bad Apple had the overall goal of taking over Bumbleberg, and the citizens she targeted were specifically people she needed out of the way for her plan to work. In the GBA game, she comes off more like a general troublemaker rather than a scheming mastermind, since it feels like she's just randomly choosing who to target. Junior's one good example of that, but to name another, later in the game she traps Bob the Tomato. What does she have to gain by trapping Bob the Tomato? But I'm getting ahead of myself. Her next target's Alfred, who loves watching this slapstick comedian called Top Banana. This was something from the episode itself, so this makes sense. Which brings us to a funhouse world. It's here that we're introduced to colored, platform-triggering buttons that can only be active one at a time, <coughs> as well as locks and keys. 
what you're looking at me like that for? I just had to cough. Also, I forgot to mention this earlier, but there are a few different types of pickups in every level. There's the armor that keeps you protected from enemies, the boombox that gets every enemy dancing, which is how you flip switches without the P flipping them back, as well as these timer pickups. One slows down the timer, and the other speeds it up. You can only have one of these active at one time, which also applies to enemy effects. So say you get slowed down by the onion, you can immediately nullify its effect by picking up an item. I do like that aspect of the pickups, but given how often you're going to find yourself using stuff like the boombox or another effect that comes up in the third world, some pickups are gonna feel useless to go after, since they're often gonna be negated a few seconds later. Doesn't help that the boombox essentially does what the armor does plus more, so the armor is practically pointless. Anyway, we get to the second boss level, where the bad apple has you partake in... a breakout minigame. It it's literally just breakout. Points for variety, I suppose? So speaking of variety, after beating the boss level and saving Alfred, you get brought into a very different type of level, where Larry Boy speaks with original the character about forgetting where his car is parked, which prompts Larry Boy to tell this mushroom fellow that the game completely made up about a song. There's two of these song levels in the game, and to put it bluntly, I don't like them. You essentially have to repeat the parts of the song played to you on this piano chunk by chunk, and compared to the general faster pace of the normal gameplay, it's a boring slog that goes on for way too long. And worse yet, as far as I'm aware, you have to beat it to progress to the next world. There is one positive to these levels though. Alfred does some pretty sick flips. With that, we move on to the third world, which actually takes a page straight out of the PS2 game, as you're now taken into the inner workings of a game system to find the video game-loving news reporter, Petunia Rhubarb. We also discover that Larry Boy is, and I quote, quite the gamer. I am so sorry for you, Bumbleberg. This world also introduces its own equivalent to the cape mechanic from the PS2 game, albeit with far less to it. By interacting with this fan thing, you get full airborne movement for a set amount of time. Now you think such a power would be utterly broken, but surprisingly, the level design's actually pretty well done and prevents this power from being abusable. Though if I can poke fun at this a bit, the sprite animation when Larry Boy's flying looks kinda silly, particularly the expression combined with the body itself not animating at all. Though on that note, the sprite work overall is pretty alright. Some of the portraits look better than others, as we noted earlier, but the character sprites themselves are well animated for the most part, and stick out well in the environments. There was never a point where it felt like something crucial was hard to see, which is good. As for the music, well, it is a Game Boy Advance game, so there's only so much one can do with that sound font. The game uses chiptune renditions of already existing VeggieTales songs, and the results are... Mm, hit and miss. With more misses than hits. Tracks like Rock on Larry Boy and the Hairbrush song don't translate too well to the GBA sound font, but a special mention here goes to the game's rendition of the Water Buffalo song. The grandfather of silly songs, the one that started the whole thing. And this is what it sounds like on a Game Boy Advance. On the flip side though, the game actually has a pretty slick cover of the Rumor Weed song from the second Larry Boy episode. Don't know how this one in particular translated better to a GBA than the others did, but it did. And now we move on to the third world's boss level. Here you have to protect Petunia from enemy projectiles by reflecting them and, in turn, sending them into the game devices to destroy them. Neat in concept, but this is one of those bosses that rely on the enemy wave doing a specific attack pattern to be able to hit your targets, and the attack patterns are randomly ordered, so you could be waiting a while before you're able to take out the devices. Not a bad boss fight, but just a bit tedious. Still better than most of the bosses in the PS2 version, that's for sure. Next up we go to a newly opened hotel, with its only guest being the previously mentioned Bob the Tomato, whose temptation is... food? Bit of an odd choice for Bob's temptation, given we already have two VeggieTales characters with a thing for eating. And again, not entirely sure what the Bad Apple gains from trapping Bob of all people, but I digress. Now admittedly, this was around the point where the game started to feel a bit on the repetitive side. The game doesn't add any new mechanics or gimmicks after the introduction of the Cape Fan in World 3, and the level design starts feeling rather samey, aside from this one pipe maze level near the end of the world. Because of that, there's not a whole lot to note about World 4. Aside from the boss level, you're in control of the hotel security, and you have to toggle between the colored doors to ensure Bob gets away from the Bad Apple. Granted, you're able to cheese it really easily if you time the first few door toggles just right, but yeah, this is actually kind of neat. After this is the second song level. Yippee! This time it's Larry Boy trying to convince Laura Carrot to prioritize buying a gift for her mother over buying some on-sale flip-flops for herself from, well hey, a Stuff Mart reference. Cute. Unfortunately, it's just as tedious as the one before. Heck, this one actually felt longer than the one before. I was happy to get this over with, that's for sure. And with that, we get to the last world of the game. 
That fell awfully quick. Where Alfred narrows down the Bat Apple's hideout and Larry Boy goes after her. However, it just so happens that her hideout's themed around Larry Boy's weakness for chocolate. But that ain't gonna stop the purple and yellow super fellow. He finally confronts the Bat Apple for one last showdown. Their method of combat? Pong. The final boss fight is a Pong match. A Pong match where the chocolate ball can multiply, yes, but still a Pong match nevertheless. I don't know how to feel about this. After defeating the Bad Apple, Alfred talks to Larry Boy about the moral of overcoming temptation with the help of God and those close to you, and Larry Boy jumps around a city area before the credits roll. And... Yeah, that's the whole game. No extra features, nothing unlocked for completing it, which means I 100%ed this game in the span of... 48 minutes. Definitely shorter than I remember it being as a kid. Though to be honest, even though the game was incredibly short, I had a decent time with it. While yes, it's got its problems, the levels do feel more repetitive as you get closer to the end, and those piano levels are really boring, but all in all, there is some simple fun to be had with this. Now granted, there's definitely a lot of better 2D platformers out there, without a doubt, and this is definitely far from a must-play, you're really not missing much by skipping on this one, but as a whole... Yeah, it was alright. Better than I was expecting it to turn out with this revisit, to be honest. And that just about covers everything this time around. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go try to dig up some other VeggieTales-related game products so I have an excuse to talk about this series again on the channel, because that's just how I am. This has been Black Mage Maverick, and until the next video, have a nice day, everybody.